Oh, hello. Yes, am I through to uh, Jehovah's Witnesses? Are uh, you through to John? We've spoken before, Robert. Right. OK. I'm now up to chapter 24 in Enjoy Life Forever. Um, I'm um, curious about what it's got to say about spirits and contacting spirits. OK. Uh, thank you. Um, it's on page 99. It's paragraph 3. It says, Satan and the demons mislead many people through demonism or spiritism, which is the bad practice of trying to communicate with spirits. For example, some people consult astrologers, fortune tellers, psychics and witch doctors. Others seek form of medical treatment that involves spiritism. People are also tricked into believing that they can speak to the dead. But Jehovah warns us, do not turn to the spirit mediums and do not consult fortune tellers. He gives us this warning to protect us from Satan and the demons. They are God's enemies and they want to harm us. Um, OK, I've read that and I would agree we shouldn't contact spirits and use Ouija boards and mediums and so on. I, I would agree with that. But on JW.org, I found a watchtower where they approve of spiritism with regard to the Johannes Grieber version of the Bible. This is the Watchtower, 15th of February, 1956, page 111. And in that, they commend Pastor Grieber for contacting spirits and asking the spirits to translate his Bible for him. Certain parts of Grieber's Bible, published in 1937, found their way into the 1950 edition of the New World Translation Greek Scriptures. So it seems to me that uh, as, as opposed to um, really trying to find out what we view, how we view um, spiritism, which is ba really based on what the Bible has to say, mm -hmm. you are trying to look for areas of uh, our publications which may uh, seem to uh, be at uh, differences from what the scriptures say. Well, it's, um, it's well known that Pastor Johannes Grieber, a defrocked Catholic priest, was a spiritist. Um, that is admitted, as I say, in the Watchtower, 15th of February 1956, page 111. Um, where... well, I'd have to read the whole. I'd have to read the whole article yes. um, because, without reading the whole article, um, it, it's very difficult to take a sentence like you've just quoted and see where the context is. Yes, it says at the bottom of the left-hand side of the page very plainly the spirits in, and now the top of the right-hand side, which ex-priest Grieber believes. Just move it along a little bit. Whoops. I can't seem to... Uh, helped him in his translation. Um, and for many years after this, for about 25 years, the Watchtower literature repeatedly approved of Pastor Grieber. He's mentioned in the Aid to Bible Understanding twice. And How do you spell uh, Grieber? Pardon? How do you spell Grieber? Uh, G-R-E-B-E-R. -E -E it's Johannes Grieber. And he issued a Bible in 1937. Um, not the first time this has actually happened, where he, a, a man has asked spirits to translate the Bible for him. Um, there was a famous case a hundred years previous to this, where a guy called John S. Thompson, the author of the Monotisorum, um, also contacted spirits. Um, Ouija boards hadn't been invented by that time. Pastor Grieber also ended up using Ouija boards as well as automatic writing. But in John S. Thompson's day, which was the um, early 1800s, um, he used seances to contact spirits and then the spirits would help him with his Bible translation. Um, John S. Thompson is mentioned in the Kingdom Interlinear translation, the Blue Edition. Appendix 2A on page 1139. So again, the Watchtower is approving of spiritism because it's approving of um, um, 
a translation of the Bible that that they know full well has occultic roots. Um, they no longer mention Grieber. They stopped mentioning Grieber in the 1980s, but they did promote him and they did promote his work for about 25 years, repeatedly in the Watchtower magazines and literature. Um, so I'm um, just going to read you a passage now from uh, Watchtower in the 80s, which talks about his translation. What's the reference? Um, the reference is Watchtower 83. Is it the April. question from readers? There it is, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's, that's, that's when they stopped quoting Grieber in 1983. But before then, they used Grieber and Grieber's translation extensively. And it was only when he was exposed, um, apparently a former Jehovah's Witness went to the Johannes Grieber Foundation and bought an entire box load of Grieber's Bible and Grieber's other book, Communication with the Spirit World of God, and then passed them on to other ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. And there was the internet didn't exist at that time. It caused quite a hoo-ha. And um, from that moment on, the Watchtower has said, we, we don't have anything more to do with Pastor Grieber. But Grieber's Bible underlies the New World Translation. The New World Translation reads in places the way it does because it's borrowed from Johannes Grieber <coughs> and from the other occultic New Testament, the Monotesaurin by John S. Thompson, which is um, still quoted today in your purple, in, no, in your blue interlinear. Appendix 2A. So um, I've um, I've been studying the Bible with Jehovah's Witnesses since 1968, and I've uh, been through thousands of uh, different articles, uh, all Bible related, quoting from the Bible, and um, never once have I uh, come across anything that has uh, condoned any form of contact with spiritism. In fact, the, uh, one of the publications that we use first to uh, have a Bible study with people, the truth that leads to eternal life, uh, clearly states uh, that it is, uh, uh, and stating from the scriptures, uh, from Deuteronomy uh, 18 and uh, many other scriptures, that uh, anything like that is absolutely abhorrent to Jehovah. Uh, he would not accept it, and we should have no part of it. Uh, I can actually get you the reference, if you want me to, from The Truth That Leads to Eternal Life that was um, actually published in 1969. So uh, there you've got a 53-year-old publication. It doesn't go back to the 50s, but I know in the 50s uh, we actually taught the same thing. So I really... What I fail to um, understand about w w what you're quoting is why are you quoting it? And, and that really is the hub of the conversation yeah. as to whether or not it's worth even con continuing to discuss it with you, Robert. Because uh, just as an example, the last time you texted me, you wanted to know uh, what right the 144,000 had to believe that they had the same authority as Jesus to uh, rule with him for a thousand years. Uh, what right did they have and um, what, you know, who did they think they were, basically? Um, and so it seems to me that you are looking for, and I may be wrong, you tell me if I'm wrong, but I, don't know, I would like to be, uh, you'd like you to say I'm wrong, but you're looking for instances, citations where you believe that uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are doing nothing but misleading people? Um, well, it is a fact, not an opinion, that in that watchtower... Just tell me how you feel that, Robert, because I, I don't really want to... Right. I can go into the watchtower, but without knowing your motives, I don't know whether or not it's worth discussing. The Bible commands me to avoid spiritism, and it seems that the Watchtower, especially the Watchtower New World Translation, has links, close links to spiritism. The the Watchtower. I've never read anywhere. I've, I've, I've been using the um, New World Translation since 1968, 
and I've never read anywhere in the New World Translation or what has now become the Study Bible because it has the references uh, alongside all the scriptures uh, so that we can dig deeper into encyclopedias, etc., where it condones spiritism of any form, shape, uh, whatsoever. But what, it, what is your motive, Robert? Why, are, why aren't we having this? Why... For instance, let, let, let me give you one example. No, right, I need to know why, why you want to know. Why is it that you want a discussion about this, these subjects? Why is it? Because as I go through your book, Enjoy Life Forever, there are things that puzzle me. And one thing would be the historical fact that in the Watchtower literature, it is not an opinion, it is not slander on my part is it a historical fact that the watchtower has close associations at the level of the governing body with spiritism um for instance let me give you well, one well, i've got a friend who lives actually locally and he um, he served at uh, brooklyn with members of the governing body for quite some years and i know his thoughts on spiritism very well and I know his thoughts on how the governing body conducted themselves. Uh, they didn't get paid. They, 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 they lived in the same accommodation as everybody else. And um, he used to accompany them on uh, uh, visits to, to people, ordinary people, in their homes and to conduct Bible studies with them. So, you know, his word is good enough for me. Plus the other 54 years that I've had of studying the Bible, um, I, I, all I want to know, Robert, is what is your motive? For, I don't understand why the you're Watchtower... You're not giving me a motive at all. You, you won't discuss what your motive is. Yes, my, my, my motive is to understand why the Watchtower, and especially the New World Translation, has such a close connection to Spiritism. Now, Grieber well, is... that's what your opinion could is, Could I Robert? finish my sentence, if that's possible? There are numerous Watchtower articles where they reference John 1.1 1, 1, that should be read, they say, as a God, not God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the New World Translation reads, and the Word was a God. Now, nobody in church history, nobody in 2,000 years of church history with a PhD in Biblical Greek has ever translated the Bible that way. Right? The two Bibles that read so, that... So Could I just finish you... my sentence? Please allow me to finish my sentence. The two New Testaments that read that way, there's actually three. The first one doesn't count. Archbishop Newcomb reads, and the word was God, not a God. But what happened was, years after Archbishop Newcomb's death, a man with no biblical training, but was very wealthy, bought the plates and the copyright and changed Archbishop Newcomb's Bible in John 1 to read a God. I think he was a Christadelphian. So that doesn't count because Archbishop Newcomb never wrote and the word was a God. That leaves only two Bibles in the English speaking world which read and the word was a God before 1950 when the New World Translation came out. Johannes Grieber's Bible and that was one of the first things that the spirits told him in the seances that John 1.1 1, 1 shouldn't be read the word was God but the word should be read a God. And you reference this all the time. The aid book, 1669, states that John 1.1 1, 1 should be read a God. Um, the Watchtower, 15th of September, 1962, page 554. Um, Make Sure of All Things, page 489. So you referenced Grieber to support because these, these references mention Johannes Grieber's translation as support for the New World Translation. Grieber was an occultist. Grieber used his seances at the start, and in the end he used, ended up using Ouija boards to translate the Bible. The other occultist who, whose Bible reads um, John 1.1 1, 1, and the word was a God is the Monotisoran by the occultist John S. Thompson. And he's still quoted in Watchtower Literature today in the blue interlinear, in Appendix um, 2A, page 1139. John S. Thompson, early on in the Monotisoran, put forward the idea, which was given to him by the spirits, 
in the seances that John 1 1 should read a God. So that's the basis of the New World Translation rendering. There is not one Greek scholar in 2,000 years of church history who has translated um, John 1 1 as a God. Now, if I'm wrong, quote me. Quote me the name of the scholar, please. All I want to say to you, Robert, is that um, if you want, firstly, I'll say two things. Firstly, if you want me to look at uh, all this information, just send it over email to me. Okay. Uh, or WhatsApp it, or you can have my email address. It's just. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I can, I can, t I can text. I can, I can text you the references. I don't know how, what, how to do WhatsApp. I'd like to get it, but I don't know what this QR code is. I don't know what. I don't know what this QR code thing is, and I don't know how to work it. So every time I've tried to log well, on to WhatsApp, I've been totally unable to do that. to copy and paste it into an email, a, a reference. Where, where, where you get your reference from, and let me uh, have a look at it. In relation to John 1.1, 1, 1, I totally disagree, and the context of the actual, actual chapter John, chapter 1, uh, is undoubtedly not referring to Almighty God, uh, but is referring to Jesus himself, and that's the reason that it should be rightly rendered a God. Um, there are other translations which I've actually looked at now that actually render a God. Name them. Uh, a God. Name them. Um, Name them. Two of them are by occultist, Johannes Grieber, 1937, and the Monotisaurin in the early 1800s by John S. Thompson. So name well, them. Name, Bible, name uh, the others for me, please. Name uh, them. Well, I just mention it. No, you are vague Jeez. and you are imprecise. So, Robert, we, we name the trans. Get to the point. Name, Robert, we name get to the, the please point. name Robert, the translation. Robert, we always get to the point where we head on to head on, and I'm not going to allow that to happen again. Would you please name the translations, please, for me? I, I just named it to, to you, and because you were talking over me, you didn't pick it up. Well, so, I, all right, I'm sorry about that. Could you please name the translation for me? The Reference Bible. What, what, what do you mean, Reference Bible? Well, if you don't know what the Reference Bible is, I can't help you. What, the New reference World Translation different. Reference Bible? Uh, no, there is a, a Bible called the Reference Bible. And also, there's other uh, translations that I've read uh, before that um, in relation to uh, John 1.1. 1, 1. Um, uh, the Reference Bible, I've never heard of it. Let me just look it up. Okay. Who oh, is the author yeah. of the Reference Bible? I've got the Schofield Reference Bible. Are you referring to the Schofield Reference Bible? I'm um, not sure. You're not sure? No, no, because you've just come on the phone with all this <clears throat> information that you're shooting down the phone at me, and um, I've just come in mm. totally clean uh, from not thinking about the scriptures whatsoever to... Um, now, <clears throat> having to uh, go into um, an in-depth discussion with you again, I uh, keep asking you what, what actually is your motive. I want to avoid spiritism. To discuss these things with me. Is it to prove in your own mind that Jehovah's Witnesses are incorrect, or are you trying to prove in someone else's mind? I it want can to... only be one of the two. Can yes. only be one of the two. I want to know why the Watchtower, f for for decades has promoted spiritism. I've, I've already told you what to do on that front. Shoot me the information over and I'll have a look at it. Okay, well, I'll certainly now, do that. you've got on the computer, so you can I email found an, I found a Newbury reference Bible. There's a Newbury reference Bible. There is a Schofield reference Bible. Are these the ones you're... Uh, I could be. Have a look at them. Uh, but what to do is kind of uh, email, email me the references over and I'll have a look at them. Thomas Nelson publishers have a series of reference Bibles. Okay, well, excellent. Um, just um, email me the references over about this Thomas yeah. Johannes Greek Gruber. Yeah. And I'll have a look and I'll let you know what I think. Yes, of uh, course. But I don't really think, Robert, with the best within the world, I know you're looking into the scriptures, but it seems that you are 
absolutely determined to prove Jehovah's Witnesses wrong. Now, what are you going to get out of it? Well, if Jehovah's Witnesses are right, I'm going to fail because I'd be fighting against Jehovah God. If you, if you are the uh-huh. true religion and Jehovah is on your side, why be so afraid of me? I'm not afraid of you, Robert, Good. as you, have, uh, you, you will know from our previous four discussions. The, 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 the point gets Oh, there's to, four of uh, them. Has there been four? Yeah, we've had four discussions. Oh. We've had uh, one, um, uh, we had a preliminary one. We had one on um, Zoom and we've had two since. I'm asking my subscribers who live outside of the UK to please help me. I'm actually quite desperate for help because this work that I'm doing in evangelising Jehovah's Witnesses and other cults has really come to an end here in the UK because everyone now knows about me. They've all been warned about me and it's very, very difficult now for me to find people who will actually talk to me. However, that situation can be resolved if people help me. All I'm asking people to do is to go to jw.org, scroll down to find a meeting, click on find a meeting, and then you can go to your part of the USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, or the Caribbean, any part of the English speaking world. Click on, it doesn't have to be near you, it could be any any, um, Jehovah's Witness congregation in your locality. Click on that congregation, phone them up and just say you would like to attend a Jehovah's Witness meeting on Zoom and then copy down the details accurately. What's the name of the congregation? What's the town or the city? If it's in America, what's the state? I will need to know the time that they are on. For instance, if it's in Florida, it's going to be Eastern Standard Time. If it's in California, it's going to be Pacific Standard Time. So I need to know the name of the congregation, the town or city, the state, uh, and obviously the country, uh, the time that they are on, because I live in the UK and I need to make adjustments, and of course the time of the meeting. It doesn't have to be a Sunday meeting, it could be a midweek meeting. Now, please, I wish to make this very clear I cannot possibly afford to change my phone contract and to phone outside of the UK it's too expensive please don't contact me and send me long rambling explanations as how I can do this and that and the other and pay for this contract and that contract and then I can phone all over the world I can't do it however zoom calls cost me nothing so if you give me accurate zoom details and they must be accurate I can then log on free using Zoom to that Jehovah's Witness meeting and then get Bible studies in America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Caribbean, South Africa, if my subscribers help me. And I'm asking you to please help me because I cannot continue this work in the UK. Thank you.